Well, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. In my mind, I think we're going to be talking about a, a very vital subject uh, regarding the Church of Christ. And uh, we're going to allow the scriptures to help us along in terms of how we're going to approach it. When I began to study this scripture, I was looking at it from two perspectives. Uh, one which we will turn to, let us turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 2 first. The meat of our text will be in chapter 4. But I want second, uh, the second chapter to be our setting. Because the two, the two ideas in which the scripture is, is speaking to me is, is where we sit and how we walk. The scripture will teach us in the second chapter, we're going to start with verse number four. And we're going to stop in verse number six. But God who is rich in mercy, for that his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, <clears throat> has quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved here's the verse and has raised us up together look what he's getting ready to do and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus he has quickened us from this dead state that we were in he has quickened us together he has seated us in the heavenly places, but we find ourselves where? In Christ. Mm. The issue becomes when we talk about unity, we have to understand there's two ways in which we can approach this from the scripture. Our thoughts, understanding the fact that we are in Christ was number one, and then number two, as we turn to the fourth chapter, is we're gonna find out, we need to look at the scripture and allow it to teach us as we read it, I'm just going to read the first three verses of scripture. We may continue on down up to verse number six. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness, meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace keeping the unity of the spirit when we go back and look at the, at how the scripture opens up paul is letting us know his location paul wrote this letter to uh, the, uh, the church of ephesus while he was in prison in rome he urged them i beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation. The walking worthy is the issue. What does this mean? Let us move over, and how do we do this? Move over to chapter five, and let us look at verse number one and two. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, Look how it says we ought to walk. And we need to walk and walk in love as Christ has loved us and has given himself for us and offering a sacrifice of God to God for a sweet smelling savor. This word walk, what does this word walk mean? Is two things. Is how are you living and what is your conduct? I love the word conduct because it speaks in terms of your mannerism. How do we interact with one another? It's going to hope, it's, it's our hope to set the world ablaze, to allow the world to ask the question what is so different between the clean and the unclean? I believe that's in Ezekiel chapter 44. I think it's around verse number 23. There has to be a distinction between the church and the unclean. But the, but the question becomes, 
Are we living out the things that the scriptures are teaching us in order for us to accomplish this great task? Because how is it that we're going to be the light of the world when we are yet walking contrary to the scripture? Because the world is watching as we are confessing the fact that we are Christians. And that's oftentimes a word that is used very loosely. But we must know as we spoke about it this morning that we need to understand Jesus with the understanding. We need to understand the, the fact that, that we are now seated and seated in heavenly places with Christ. And we must tell the world how is it that we have this position. The world will tell us that you are just saved by grace. The world will tell us that all that you need to do is just believe. But somewhere in the book of James in the second chapter it says even the devil believes. And it's unfortunate that the world is going to hell in a, in a hay basket if we don't walk according to the scriptures sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and not being a ashamed of the gospel as it tells us in Romans chapter 1 but our walk our conduct is vitally important and the scripture goes on to say it's dealing with this word call first of all we know that we only call one way and that's in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 14 let us let us turn there let us just look at scripture Because here's another misconception. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Anybody know what verse we're going to? Thank you. We're going to verse number 14. But I'm going to take a cue from my brother and read up from start of verse number 13 and read down to 14. He knows what I'm talking to. But we are bound to give thanks always for you, brethren beloved of the Lord because God has has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through the sanctification of the spirit and belief of truth this is how we're called whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ so here is another nugget that we must share with the world when oftentimes there will be those that will say, I was called to preach and I was called to do X, Y, and Z. But the scripture tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 21 that we must do what? Prove all things and to hold fast to that which is good. So this is another area where we can again take the gospel to the world and let them by just a simple conversation just let them know you are not called here to preach you are called number one by the gospel of jesus christ and the hope is unto salvation but the salvation must come by and we must hear it by the word of god the call the chosen ones how we live and how we conduct ourselves in this life. But we should not be so overly concerned with the affairs of this life because we are not here for that. We are only here as children of God to share the good news, which is the hope for the world. If we, as it was said this morning, if we can just get them pointing towards Christ. And it's up to them to obey the gospel message. But look at some of these characteristics that we must have in order to accomplish this word called unity of the spirit. Loneliness, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another in love loneliness how about a little bit of humility Amen. not arrogance not being prideful but just thinking just in other words just putting someone else just for a moment before yourself 
Yes, you have the meekness and the power to, to, make, to, make, to, to do some great things. But yet, can you control it well enough to let a sinner know that this is the way, that Jesus is the way, and he is the truth in the life? Or is it more important for you to tell someone that I am preacher and pastor so-and-so? Which cause us to boast in things that we should not be anywhere close to. We should have a bit of humility towards our approach to this life. That the world may know that we are his disciples. And it's only going to, and it's only going to show by one way. And that's because of the what type of fruit? The fruit that we bear. And we must live it out. How long will you suffer for the one who is lost? How long did Christ give us an opportunity before we obeyed his gospel? Long suffering, forbearing. Some of us was just hard headed. But Jesus said, I, I can wait a little bit longer just to give him a, a little bit more time to get it right before it's too late. Bearing with one another, the Bible says, in love. That's just not lip service. This is a characteristic that comes straight from God. We can read chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians and it's only one thing that's, that matters and that's the word called love, charity. We have to function in this with, with the understanding of love, having a zeal for God, but through love, being long-suffering through love, having a bit of loneliness in love and meekness, that the world may see something different when we are given the opportunity. But will we seize the moment to be that humble servant? When the world is looking for direction. Look what it says in verse number three. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. There's only one spirit. There's only one way that we're going to receive this spirit. And it's another opportunity to teach the world is what the, is what the Jews cried out in Acts chapter 2, what must we do? And Peter did not tell those folks to go and wait until, he, until Paul established the church of Ephesus that you're going to be saved by grace. That's not what he told them. He did not tell them, just believe. He did not tell them to say a sinner's prayer. He told them that the only way that you are going to be saved, and Peter said what? Repent and what? And be baptized for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and you shall receive the gift, excuse me, and you shall receive remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That sounds better. This is how we have to take the scriptures to the world and to, to correct the errors and even the errors in which we received and lived until we heard truth and obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Keeping the unity of faith, of the spirit. And when we are not operating in the spirit, is we should see only one thing, and that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it's confusion. Because God is not the author of his church not functioning in unity. Because if the world came and took a glimpse of this congregation right now, they would think that we are someone special. Or we are out of our minds because we are not supposed to come together as brethren, as the world may put it. But because the scripture tells us to walk in love, it dismisses all these ills that the world wants to promote day in and day out. 
because we must walk in love and this is our conduct. We must show the love one to another. This is just one body, but there are many members. And how we function in this one body, it's up to you, it's up to you, it's up to you, and it's up to me. Amen. And one great thing I like about the, church, the, Lord, the Lord's church is there's no big eyes and little use if we have the leadership that was spoken of this morning. In our homes and also the leaders in the church. The church is, is in dire straight for good leadership, sound teaching, and sound doctrine. Put all these things about the world, leave it somewhere else. It has no place here. Told us to go and preach the gospel to the world, and not we ourselves. In the bond of peace. Servants of God. Is there any peace about any of us when we are living this life? Peace, the quietness of our spirits, relying on the principles of God. But understand this we're going to face some trials, there are going to be some difficulties, but how we gather ourselves together and have the conversation through the Word of God to give us the understanding how we're going to move the lost church forward is going to be up to good leadership. Good leadership. There's no lost church in its, in its location that is not dealing with problems. But it's how we deal with our problems is the issue. Will we rely upon the word to teach us how to instruct, which gives us the instructions and the reproof as it speaks to us in 2 Timothy 3, 3, 16. Will we rely upon the word or will we revert back to our carnal minds to say this is how we're going to do things? And as we were speaking this morning, it was what do you do when you are taught wrong, but too proud to admit your faults. How can my wife and I move the family forward if we just can't sit down and practice James 5.16? Just admit your faults one to another so that they can be healing in the lost church. And there are various problems as it was spoken this morning at lunch that we all are faced with and our sister almost came to tears just expressing the love that she has for these little children but the world says it's not possible but that right there works every time This is so moving to me because we were all once lost. Amen. And now that we have the answers from God and how we best move forward His work, I've always had this mindset that I never want to be left out. And I would have that feeling because when I was younger, I had a mindset I wanted to do things my way. And if we're going to make errors in the lost church, this is how we're going to do it. By closing the scripture. And not allowing the, 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 the words of God to, to bless our families and to bless your soon reunion. Union. Bless this marriage, that marriage, my marriage, this marriage, his marriage. It's, it's going to have to come from the scriptures if we choose to do it God's way. Now, I can give you a whole lot of what I used to think in the world and it, led, it was leading me straight to Hades. 
But if we're going to do this right, we should not give ourselves any other choice but to rely upon God's word. Unity. There's nothing more chaotic to walk into is confusion. But the idea is, is how do we fix it? We got to knock one brick down at a time. One attitude down at a time. But we can't be afraid to do the work. Because we have been given this task and have been called the ambassadors. We are the light of the world. And if we want to take this light and put it under a bushel, what good are we? If I lose, if you lose your salt, what good is this light if I don't walk in unity with my brothers and sisters in Christ? We have come from various areas of this country. And I was telling Brother Green the way we were communicating and the way Brother Stevens and I just picked up on our conversation because he was actually the one that baptized me into Christ. And I said I lived in Miami, Florida. So you know he lives in Texas. That story is another story all by itself. And how Brother Sanders and I and Brother Nick and I just talk as if we've been knowing each other all of our lives. Because there's a love for one another. There's a concern for one another's soul. And now that we have met other brethren in the Lord's church, there's no difference in the love that I get from my brothers that I know from those that I just met. Amen. And that is a good thing. That's right. We have to keep this bond moving forward and understand that we're going to have to persevere. We're going to have to persevere against some attitudes, and that starts with me and you and everyone else. And when these attitudes come, they must be cast down. And love always must rise up and stick its head up and say, not today. Because you are my brother and you are my sister, just as much as these people that are my brother and sister that I know proud to come in. And there is no respect of person in Christ. That's right. Amen. And we should treat each other as such. That brings about unity. Amen. Not about how I feel. Because right now I'm feeling a certain way. And in a few minutes this feeling is going to move into a different direction. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this is how he wants his church to move forward. Consistency in the scripture. And we are to learn from one another. Even the mistakes. Because we're going to make some. But have a heart of repentance. We must have a heart to receive it and offer the one thing that we're all searching for and that is forgiveness. Don't allow someone else's shortcomings to be your problem because you don't want to forgive because you're not operating in love and in unity. Why is this so important to Paul? Because Paul recognized the mind of the people whom he was writing to. God didn't tell the man to love his wife just because. He did it for a reason. Is it because we have a very difficult time as men loving pretty much anything? So we have to war against the things that are, that are difficult for us. He told the woman to submit to her husband. Did he just tell the woman to do such just because he didn't have anything else to write? No, because it's the mindset that he knew that was in the woman. But he also told us both to submit ourselves who? To God. That's unity. But it starts at home. You can learn it here, but it's what we take from here back to home, which will make all the difference in the congregation. But we must be consistent with our approach and understanding to this word called unity and how important it is. We should be able to meet other brethren in the Lord's church and, and just think we just met them yesterday. 
We should be saying, what does, it, what does the scripture say? We should all be saying what? The same thing and being of the same mind. Love one another. Forbearing one another. Because someone in the congregation will come here and not have it all together. But how you embrace that is going to make a difference in the world. Or, or will we run them out because we are not recognizing our responsibility to one another? Verse 4 says this. There is one body. Look what it says and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your call one Lord one faith one baptism one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all all that we read was the oneness of God scriptures is it not in first corinthians chapter 13 where paul asked the question is christ divided then why are we allowing what's here on earth to create division amongst ourselves because we get we, we fall ourselves into this mindset of carnality don't want at times the scriptures to teach us to mature us in a way in which the Lord desires us to grow and we will stay on first base until we get it right but many of us want to come in and be baptized and get home runs from, from, from the pound we get out of the water it's not going to work that way it's, the brother said this morning it's okay to be a baby I was one you so were you but we must grow and mature. But we must have the love and the zeal and the desire to do that. And as we're constantly being told, there are times when we just need to just burn some midnight oil and turn those devilish TVs off and put these cell phones down and get ourselves in God's word and allow his word to, to speak to our hearts and correct some of these mistakes that we're making. But if we don't spend the necessary time in God's word, the unity of the spirit will be difficult. And we're going to always wonder why we're having such problems. Because we do not want to do the things that we have been charged to do. Because oftentimes we have become a little bit lazy and taken too many things for granted. That God is always going to be here. Oh, the thing, oh, it don't matter. I, I don't need to be, I don't need to obey that. But this is what I wanted to share with us tonight. That we must recognize where we are. When God sees us, he sees us. When God sees his son, he sees us. But what is our conduct? How are we living on a day-to-day -day basis? First of all, how are we even embracing one another? I wanted to kind of slow myself down a little bit because I wanted these words to be just as impactful to you as it is to me. Because if we don't, let us turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Is that it? No, 2 Corinthians, excuse me. Not chapter 12, I believe it's 13. Chapter 13. The first two words in this verse of scripture is all I want us to look at. Let us look at verse number five. And this is how we're going to be able to understand unity and walking in love if we don't do these two very things these two very words it says examine yourselves it's the only way that we're going to be able to accomplish 
because if we're not honest with ourselves, then we'll always be missing the mark. Right. And missing the mark will not allow us to enter into that place called heaven. Every aspect of our lives, we must examine every area to make sure, number one, that there is no sin within us. And when we talk about certain uh, lessons in the scripture, unity, what part am I playing in this unity? I have to look at myself. If I'm, am I a Hades raiser in the church? Or am I someone who is easy to be taught? Easy to be spoken to? Or am I just one of these rough, 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 rough kind of guys? Examine yourselves in every aspect of life. And if there's sin, we need to repent of it, brother. If it's error, we need to fix it by way of the word. But don't spend so much time on the things that you are doing well. Challenge yourself in those areas that are tough. And you are the only one that knows what those things are. Because I can only judge based upon two factors. What I see and what you say. But God judges the heart. So I'm just saying it this way. But before, he gets, before God gets to my heart, I want to take a look at it first. So I can receive a little bit of mercy that we spoke about this morning. Because I want to make sure my heart is right. And then we can then encourage others to do the same thing. And I think we'll make the Lord's church a better place. And we can welcome strangers in to give them the gospel. But we must spend time and study searching the scriptures, taking nothing for granted, and making sure that whatever is taught, it's sound. Because if it's not sound, we're going to leave out of here teaching them. That's all that I have for us tonight. If there's any questions or comments based upon our lesson tonight, the floor is yours. Brother Nick? I just want to comment on that examining yourself. That is probably one of the hardest things for us to do. You know, you really have to look within yourself what you're doing, and a lot of people don't want to do that. And I think uh, I like your points about humbling yourself and allowing, you know, you have to really humble yourself and love. And if you're wrong, you know, if you can't admit a fault, you know, you ain't, you ain't going to make it. You know what I mean? So I, I appreciate that. Thank you. If honesty is not at the forefront of any of the decisions and things that we are examining. If it's not at the forefront, it's going to be tough. Brother Green? that was coming to mind as you were speaking the word discernment using the way in which you were speaking it's amazing how we can always discern someone else's problems but we don't look at ourselves and examine ourselves and discern the things that we are doing because oftentimes we think we're just getting away with it because oftentimes we we'll use scriptures to out speak or out talk someone else when yet God is still watching and he said he's recording everything that we do in this body and if my thoughts are not right I need to get it right before it's too late. Anyone else? For the it was a great lesson. Uh, <laughs> brother, I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, and, you know, I know your story. Uh, you 
brought tears to my eyes when he brought these scenes up there, bro. I mean, it really it just shows the power of the gospel. I know you're not, you know, you're not trying to be patted on the back, but knowing where you came from, hearing the truth out of the denominational world, you know, obey the gospel and be standing here and teaching, you know, this lesson so plainly. Brother, I just, I'm just glorifying God in my heart for you, brother. I just thank God, you know, again, just solidifying to me that something I already know that the, the gospel is, is just powerful. I mean, it, it does, if people who are sincere, it does what it's, what it's called to do. And I thank you for allowing God to use you. You know, what I got from tonight is when we talk about unity, you know, is, is the attitude of unity. You know, when you look at Ephesians 4, the attitude of unity is loneliness, meekness, long suffering, and love. You know, and, and without that attitude, there is no unity. We, we, it can't be accomplished. And so, and I'm hoping at the same time that we understand that unity is different than uniformity. You know, we're not all we're not all look alike. You know, we're not all uh, you know we're all we are different. But at, at that rate, you know, we're all different members of the body. So I'm not you, you're not me, everybody's not a preacher, everybody's not an elder, everybody's not a Bible school teacher. But we're all working together for the common cause. And I think if we all understand that, you know, that, you know, it takes every part of a vehicle for a vehicle to be a vehicle. You know, and so when we talk about the body, it takes every member uh, to make it be what God would have it to be. So thank you, brother, for helping me, you know, to examine myself for my attitude is where it is. Anyone else? Go to Jerry. I, I like the uh, dial that Nick did. Nick. Uh, the greatest deception is self-deception. And I base that on James chapter 1, verse 22. Do not be clearly listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Yesterday's Bible class, uh, one of the brethren, as his brother was teaching yesterday, he brought up Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 25. And all that I do, all that I was hearing you say, Brother Stevenson, was this I draw my encouragement from everyone else. I don't try to be a know it all, I study keep what in front of me. I try to teach it sound. But this is not just me, but this has to become a, a lifestyle for us. It doesn't matter how long I've been in the church, how long you've been in the church. I'm just a little bit over four years. But it doesn't matter. Truth will always be true. Man. And it all depends upon who you're listening to. The Bible tells us in John chapter 6, I believe it's around 45 to 46, it says that we must be taught of God, but we have to be able to discern truth from error. Brother Sanders speak, looking for truth, sound teaching. Have a the first time reading it over the phone or YouTube or that Zoom for a long time. Read it. But we have, I think this, what we're, the, what we're creating is a love for God and a love for each other. And that brings about unity. And it doesn't matter, again, see, we have to, we can't just close our eyes to the world because the Bible tells us that we need to be alert and aware of the things that are going on around us. But we can't become so consumed about what's going on in, I don't know if that's Pennsylvania Avenue or Michigan Avenue. Listen, the world is going to do on both sides what they're going to do. But we need to focus in on the instructions that we're given to affect change. First of all, within the household of faith. How can we go out in the world and try to encourage them to come into the church when they come in here and they see a whole bunch of chaos going on? And it's not going to be a perfect 
Did you have a comment? I'm sorry. I, I, saw, I saw a hand, but I'm quick to want to stop talking. Because, you know, we're quick to want to, you know, tell someone what book, chapter, and verse says. But what happens when someone is reproofing me, but I'm standing here as, quote, unquote, as a, as a minister, and someone telling me, Carpenter, your, your attitude is, is not the way it should be. What am I supposed to do with that? Mm -hmm. Humble myself and receive correction. Anyone else? You know, uh, and, and to Brother Sawyer's point, you know, we're using James 1.22. The context of James 1 and 19 is talking about the conduct of true religion. What, what James is, is writing in James 1, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is talking about your attitude and my attitude when I hear God's word. See, when he said in verse 19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. He saw my God's word, slow to speak. He saw my God's word, slow to wrath. He still saw my God's word. For the wrath of man worketh not the rights of God. So there can be people that hear, you know, for instance, you need to be baptized. We say they can read it, they can hear it, but if I don't believe it, I get mad. I get mad when you tell me there's one church. And so I'm upset about it, and it's not going to work the righteous of God. So he says, Wherefore, he explains in verse 21, Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness. Now remember, that was that word you used back in Ephesians 4. Paul said meekness. It is an attitude of unity. So we have to receive with meekness the engrafted word, the word of God, so he's talking about, which is able to save your soul. So when you hear the word, you've got to make up your mind. When you hear it and understand, am I going to be a doer or am I going to be a hearer only? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we tell people the truth, but they I may have been doing some things in the past because I've been a member of the church, uh, such and such, it is how I was taught. But when someone has showed me and I've done, examined myself, examined the scriptures, I've got to make the necessary changes. I cannot get mad at God's word based upon my past traditions and my past beliefs if I was wrong. And so this is what I think James is really showing us and teaching us in, in this in this book. Anyone else? Brother Sanders, you're kind of quiet on this tonight. Everything's good? Yeah, I'll just, you know, coming brother the end of the day about the state of the Dina did a great job out the store. Yeah.
things that was popping in my mind as you were speaking was uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 9. It says, take, but take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours becomes a what? A stumbling block to them that are weak. If we get away from the simplicity of Christ and try to complicate what God said is already it should be simple to us, but number one, because we have His Spirit. But if we, if we want to come, and, and, and as Paul said that he was not going to do, come and, and teach with a, an articulation or the eloquence of speech, then all that we're going to do is confuse the body. And all of what we're going to be doing is allowing the things that we are saying, it will become a stumbling block to those that are weak in the faith. And not allowing the simplicity of Christ to teach all of us. And it doesn't matter how long we have been in the church. Because the church will be is, is to be governed by the scriptures. And if we and, and what happens oftentimes from just learning and just maybe just knowing people a little bit. No, what does the scripture say? The scripture should not be what? The scripture should be broken. And we should not go above that which is written. And so what happens is we get to a place where we look at the word of God as boring. We need to we need to do something other than just doing what it says, and then we then when we mention Revelation 22, either 18 and 19, whether we're adding to it, now we're finding ourselves in jeopardy. Because we want to we want we want to promote ourselves actually what it is. We want to promote our own ideas and our own tradition, and we want the masses to follow. No, I'm not going to be a part of that 3,000 swine falling off in the sea. Because every, every, here's the idea when I, when I read that parable. At some point while I'm in this crowd, everybody is disappearing. At, at some point in my life, I have to be able to put, I have to take the way of escape and, and realize what is really going on. Because that is the way in which the world is headed. And we can't go there with this. This is too rich. It's too valuable. And we're going to be tested, of course, but tested in a way in which even in our weak moments, somebody needs to be able to see it to, to do what? Encourage me to lift me up. And vice versa. Instead of, you know, being so haughty and so having the expectation so high to where the, the, the one who's speaking can't error. Come on. It's not Jesus. Right. You had a comment? No. Well, you had a comment? I can tell you hand moving. No, no. Okay. Anyone else be down to our last five minutes? We might as well take advantage of someone else. No, brother. Uh, often, I think the key word is meekness. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, and, and the context of First Corinthians 8, which you use there, he's talking about liberties. You know, you got to understand everybody's not on the same spiritual level. You got to you have to give people time to grow. I'm not talking about when it comes to sin. Now, we do need to rebuke sin, you know, because we don't know, you know, if tomorrow will be your last day or today will be your last day. So you want to, you know, you want to reprove sin and you see it. And you do that because you love it. Uh, but when it comes to liberties, you know, you, you want to make sure that your freedoms doesn't cause someone else to to stumble, to wound their conscience. And, and that's where the love kicks in. Uh, meekness, and I know you all know this, it's simply just power under control. You may have the power to do something, the ability to do something, but you can, you can control that. And, and unity can only take place and happen when those who are trying to promote it have a spirit of meekness. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, I want to read this real quick. This is Paul now. But I'm trying to teach your lesson. Oh, You've no, done no, a phenomenal no. job. But I want to show us what Paul says here himself as an apostle. Read these six verses. He's showing us in these verses his spirit to the church in Corinth. Text Corinthians 10. And verse number one. I'll read this quick. Now I call myself beseech you. Now notice how he's going to do it. By the meekness and gentleness of Christ. You see what he's going to use? Because he has to teach them a lesson. Who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I'm present. 
present with you, uh, with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination to every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having a readiness, having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is, is fulfilled. And so Paul is showing, hey, I got the power to do something. I am an apostle now. I can talk more boldly than what I am, but he understood, he understands that by doing so, it could defeat the purpose. And so you have to look at your the end goal, you know, of, of what you're trying to accomplish. We're here to, to save souls, not to destroy souls. We're here to build unity, not to cause discord. And so I think we need to just definitely keep that attitude in mind as we navigate ourselves through this life. Take the knowledge that you have and use it in a skillful manner. Wisdom. But I just want to say, because there is a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. Because you know you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you're not playing out, that's where the wisdom comes in. So first you have the knowledge, and then by acting it out, that's when the wisdom comes. Like Brother Anthony was saying. Misappropriating that power of control and not understanding the knowledge is dangerous. Um, anyone with a last comment or question before we close out in prayer? Let us close out in prayer. Most gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you, Father, for this day that you have made, that we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Father, for the gathering of the saints. We thank you, Father, that we have come to assemble together to hear another portion of your word. We pray, Father, that the things which are taught from your word, Father, they will sound doctrine. We pray, Father, that you that you are pleased with our questions and comments regarding your kingdom. And we just pray, Father, as we continue to live this life, that we would, on a daily basis, to examine ourselves and pick up our cross and, and follow thee. So help us, Father, in, in our request to, to know more about you, not with just academic knowledge, but also be a doer of your word, not just a hearer only. So we thank you, Father, for this time of prayer. We thank you, Father, for those that are here. We pray, Father, that you will continue to be with us and be with our families and bless us, Father. Help us, Father, where we are weak. And, Father, we just actually have the Father to humble us, Father, where we're strong. That we will not boast in the things in which you have allowed to become a little bit easier for us. But realize, Father, in this life you said that we would have trouble, we would have trials and our tribulations. So we must get into our hearts and our minds that we are fighting a spiritual battle. But as the brother said this morning, we must make sure that we have on our spiritual armor yes. and facing our battles and not turning our backs on the things yes. that you have charged us to do. So we thank you, Father, for all that we have learned from yesterday until today, all the speakers and all the prayers and sisters are gathering together to, yes. to speak amongst themselves and to grow, to challenge themselves. Father, we just pray that we just continue to honor your word yes. because your word does say that the women should, ought to teach one another. Father, we just thank you and praise your name for all of that has taken place. So as we dismiss ourselves from, from this place, but not from your presence, give us travel, uh, grace and mercy as we travel back to our homes and to our destination. And Father, as we sleep tonight, Father, give us a night of rest. And if it's your will, Father, we rise again tomorrow morning. Listen, and now it's our desire to hear another portion of your word from another brother from the Lord's church. We thank you, Father, and ask these blessings in your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good clarity.